with Launching Legacies. Welcome to our daily devotional. Today we are finishing the third in a three-part series about love. So for number three, we're going to talk about just the magnitude of this love. Now, yesterday we talked about what love does, right? And so there was a whole list of all of these things really where it basically said that love doesn't retreat. It never dies. And today we're going to look at the last uh third of this passage, this particular chapter, and it starts with 1 Corinthians 13, chapter 8, and we're going to go all the way to the 13th verse. And I'm going to go ahead and begin to read it, and then we'll and then we'll dialogue about it. It says, "Love never dies. Inspired speech will be some will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will re- reach its limit, and we know only a portion of the truth." And what we say about God is always incomplete. But when the complete arrives, and complete is with the capital C, so we know that means Christ, our incompletes will be canceled. And when I was when I was an infant at my mother's breast, I gurgled and cooed like an infant. When I grew up, I left those infant ways for good. We don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist, but... It will it won't be long before the weather clears up and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then. See it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly just as we are known. But for this but for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to lead us toward the consummation. Trust steadily in God. Hope unswervingly, love extravagantly, and the best of these three is love. So for one, beautifully written, right? Um, This is, again, a paraphrase. I'm reading the message. It's a paraphrase of the scriptures, but it's beautifully paraphrased. I mean, it's just, it's just amazing. But what, what is he getting at here, right? Right. We've gotten this list of what love does right before this. And then we get into this, this narrative and, and the speech is interesting because what it sounds like he's saying or what, what he seems to be implying here from this passage is that even in our best of loving, right, we should focus on it. We should do what love does. We should definitely let it do the work that that it can do in us. But even in all that and even in all the spiritual things that we can do, right, in the beginning of the passage, he was talking about natural things. We can burn, our bodies can be burned as martyrs. We can do a whole bunch of building and establishing and doing just regular work. Now we get to some spiritual work. And it says, even if you do all these spiritual works, if you have prophetic gifting and understanding, speaking in tongues, all of these things, they're going to at some point come to an end. And when they all come to an end, then we will see the true magnitude of what love is, right? It'll be demonstrated in the completeness of the love of God. And so we still do what the front former passage asks us to do. We, we still rely on that because that's still for us. But even in all of the greatness of what we do, all of our uh, achievements, we're never going to fully see. We're never going to fully know. And it says even, even what we say about God is always incomplete, right? Because even, even our ability to understand and comprehend the magnitude of a of a all powerful God is going to be limited, and it's important to know that because we're not Him, so we don't understand Him. But but as we get closer and closer to the consummation of this thing, and that's how He ends it. He says we we have three things that we need to do, and I'm going to repeat those three things. He says trust steadily in God, hope unswervingly, and love extravagantly, and the best of these three is love. And so what does he say? Your your efforts are not going to pay off to what you think they're going to pay off to. They're not going to be, you're not going to all of a sudden have an understanding of God that surpasses God's ability to be understood. No, you're still going to be in a mist. You're still going to be in a fog. You're still going to uh, unknow. You're going to be like a baby doing baby things. But as we get into the place of a fullness and completeness of the knowledge of God, which only is going to fully be done when he comes, when, when Christ returns again, when that is done, then you will know like you were known. You'll even understand yourself like God understands you when he returns, right? He'll show you who you are. He'll reflect that. But in the meantime, 
He says, I want you to focus on love. In the meantime, I want your attention to be drawn towards these things. I want you to trust in God, right? I want you to put your hope there unswervingly. And I want you to love extravagantly. And I think about what that means is that at the end of this time, what does it mean to love extravagantly? What does it mean to love relentlessly? What does it mean to lavish people with love and to be abounding in love in all things? It's something that's possible for us. It's something that we can practice. We'll never meet God in the, his measure of love, but we can definitely move in love and we can definitely be extravagant lovers. And so I hope I'm encouraged by this, by this passage. And I hope that you are as well to, to continue in love, right? To make that love extravagant, to be, to be that which this passage is calling us to be true lovers, And so I'm praying for you to be a true lover. I'm praying for you to heal from all the places that are broken that you need to be healed from. I'm praying for you to to live a life that glorifies God and that after you've been healed. And I'm praying that you would continue to grow and bear fruit in love. That that would be a part of your repertoire and that you wouldn't escape from it. Because in all of that we do, and what, what this passage is saying, all the spiritual things we do, we still don't fully understand, but we can get closer, right? We can come into more light. We can come, we can peer more deeply or intently into this fog, into this mist, knowing that at some point the gaze will be returned. And so I'm praying for you for that. I hope that you're praying for launching legacies. We do need your prayers. I think I told you before that we, we, all parts of launching legacies need your prayers. Our clients need your prayers. The families we work with need your prayers. The communities we're engaged in, they need your prayers. The people who are counseling need your prayer. Our coaches need your prayers. Those who we mentor um, need your prayers. The churches that we partner with need your prayers. I need your prayers uh, as a director. We all need prayers. And so we're asking that you would continue to pray for us and lift us up because that for us is a great measure of love. And so I want to encourage you in that. But I also wanted to ask you to go back in your own time and read 1 Corinthians 13 again and get an understanding, maybe in another translation or another paraphrase. But whatever you do, know that we are believing that God can help you to love extravagantly. Until tomorrow, be blessed.